But now we await further attempts to impeach the former president due to begin in the Senate next week, February 9. The charge, quote, Donald John Trump engaged in high crimes and misdemeanours by inciting violence against the government of the United States. He threatened the integrity of the democratic system, interfered with the peaceful transition of power and imperiled a co-equal branch of government. Unquote. This is more Pelosi rubbish sponsored by a media which has hated Trump from day one. One of the key motivations for trying to convict Trump is to ensure that he will be banned from running for president in 2024. I can tell you impeachment won't succeed, but Democrats are terrified of the power of Trump's 74 million supporters. But back to the business in the Capitol building on January 6, the so-called mob assault on the institutions of democracy. Left-wing rubbish. Now, of course, what these people did was unacceptable. They illegally entered the centre of democracy in the United States. They committed a violent incursion. But this was nothing like the fascist coup it's been described. The National Guard swiftly dealt with these morons. The barricades were put back up and Donald Trump told them to go home. It's convenient to ignore what Trump said. 18 minutes into a typical rallying Trump speech, the still president said, and I quote, we've come to demand that Congress do the right thing and only count the electors who've been fully slated, lawfully slated. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically be heard. And no one is excusing the anti-democratic cretins who found themselves in the, inside the Capitol building. But if left-wing me media cared to show the pictures, they looked like people on an unscheduled tour, taking selfies and sitting on the Speaker's chair. Well, as a result, former President Trump has to answer the charge that Donald John Trump engaged in high crimes and misdemeanours by inciting violence against the government of the United States. He threatened the integrity of the democratic system, interfered with the peaceful transition of power and imperiled a co-equal branch of government. Well, the great constitutional lawyer Alan Dershowitz, who admits to being a Hillary Clinton supporter, told Janet Albrechtson recently, read the Trump speech, and I quote him, he spoke to thousands and thousands of people, most of them didn't listen to him or didn't go to the Capitol. Amongst those who went to the Capitol, most of them didn't break into the Capitol. And amongst those who broke into the Capitol, most of them didn't engage in violence. Trump said, go peacefully and patriotically. Show the Capitol we're strong, we won't take it anymore. Said Professor Dershowitz, a member of the Democratic Party, quote, they were fighting words, but fighting words are protected by the Constitution. Fighting words are voiced by radical leftists, by union leaders, by civil rights activists. They were voiced by the suffragettes. When asked if a divisive Democrat president had given a speech like Donald Trump's on January 6 and a mob broke into Congress, would academics say it was not a crime, that it was protected speech under the US Constitution and therefore cannot be grounds for impeachment where the criteria are treason, bribery or other crimes and misdemeanours? Dershowitz's response, if a Democrat had given the same speech, would it be regarded as protected speech? Dershowitz's answer, absolutely. All of the Liberal colleagues of mine at Harvard and elsewhere would be on my side. If the person who were president were not named Trump, he said, I have no doubt they would say it was a constitutionally protected speech. This from a world acclaimed American constitutional and criminal lawyer, Professor Alan Dershowitz, a Democrat, who also said, quote, and I can guarantee you they'd be saying you can't try a president once he's left office. And as for violent patriotic riots and the moral outrage from here, we had demonstrators, left-wing demonstrators, attempt to break down the doors of our Parliament House in 1996 as part of a protest against John Howard's elected coalition government. And even during the Trump presidency itself, demonstrators invaded the Capitol building in 2018, as Gerard Henderson recently reminded us, protesting over President Trump's decision to nominate Brett Kavanaugh to the US Supreme Court. Yes, they invaded the Capitol building. But compare the indignation towards this episode leading to the threat of impeachment with eight months of looting, burning, torching and 30 deaths in Democrat-run cities approved by the Democrats and ignored, if not endorsed, by the now President Biden. Yet this quote-unquote violent speech has led to a citizen of the world, albeit a former president, locked out of social media by the corporate power of Silicon Valley. A democratically elected president, and now ex-president, prevented from engaging with millions of his voters and supporters. I'm saying this is a greater threat to democracy than the behaviour of some cretins who entered the Capitol building. This corporate behaviour will have longer, 
lasting negative consequences for open debate than anything that happened on January 6, with a few rioters at the Capitol. There are two redeeming features in all of this. One, the bulk of the media and all of their headlines don't speak for the majority, either here or in America. From the classroom to the university and now into corporate life, the left are marching through our institutions. Journalists have become propagandists. We need to treat headlines with caution. But the ultimate reading factor is this. The bulk of the public whose voice is rarely heard, but can be heard here, we are the voice of the voiceless. The public are a wake up. John Smith of Budrum in Queensland wrote recently, I quote, CNN reporting Democrats claiming Trump voters are terrorists and need to be deprogrammed should make it clear the fight the Republicans have to maintain a future. He says, never in my life have I witnessed such a display of utter hypocrisy as shown in the inauguration of Biden and Harris. With hands on hearts, they stand there giving their sanctimonious pledges to heal the divisions of American society which they have so assiduously fermented in the last four years, unquote. Well, that's true. The vitriol of Nancy Pelosi makes Trump look like a pussycat. Remember when she tore up the President's State of the Union speech live on television? You can forget the rhetoric. Unity in America is a distant memory. There are troubles ahead. The Democrats have made the bed. Now they must lie on it. Finally, remember the words of Joseph Stalin. Those who vote decide nothing. Those who count the vote decide everything. What do you think? Alan at skynews.com.au 0414 0848. And don't forget you can listen live to this program on the iHeartRadio app. Today is Monday, February 1.